Hi everyone, this is Beth Kitchen, NTR 500 Communications and Nutrition. Let's talk a little bit about filming and editing. You guys, this is really just going to scratch the surface because, you know, film students take years of film classes. I've taken a couple of film classes at UAB, and if you really get into this and really start liking it, I'd really recommend that you do that. It's really worth your while, and you will learn a lot. So I'm just going to scratch the surface here and get you guys started on, you know, trying to practice, experiment, getting on some tutorials on, on the, um, the internet because I think that's going to help. Now, what am I recording on right now? I'm just recording on my computer and I'm using a program called Camtasia. I can record with it. I can uh, record um, my screen. I can do a screenshot, which is actually what it's doing right now. I've just edited me full size, but you're gonna see me kind of going back and forth. Um, you can also, of course, Use your phone, which is what most of you are familiar with doing. So you just record on your phone and then you can even edit on your phone if you want to and you can upload right to YouTube or Instagram or wherever it is that you want to post it. We'll talk a little bit about YouTube later. Now, we're going to be talking about filming and if some of you get overwhelmed as you look at this and think, oh, how do I do all that? I always want to make sure that you know that first of all, you don't have to do any of this. Secondly, it all comes down to content. You can have the best filming, the best lighting, the best audio, and if your content isn't good, none of that's going to matter. People really care more about content. But we'll talk about how to make the content look and sound as good as possible. Now, speaking of sound, you might notice I've got this microphone over here. This is a USB mic, so it's a USB connection right here. I've got it on its stand. Okay, now I'm trying to be careful here. I don't want to topple my computer because I've got it on its stand right here. You can see the stand. So this is used for voiceovers and podcasting. Now, what I usually do when I do your lectures where I'm not on the camera, I'm just really doing a voiceover, I take it out of this stand and I just hold it in my hand because it, the sound is much better if it's right up close to me. I also don't do it in this room. I actually go and I sit on my bed because my bed has the pillows, the curtains, it's in like a little nook so it's not quite as big and spacious as this is. And so there's a lot of um, absorption of the sound, you don't hear all these echoes and everything. So when I'm doing any kind of voiceover, that's what I do. A lot of voiceover artists uh, use their closets. Sometimes we open up our closets because you got all the clothes around and that keeps the sound from being too echoey. A lot of people take um, those room dividers and put up blankets and egg crates around them. And that works really great. So you can see you don't need fancy equipment. Now this USB mic, I don't think this was all that expensive. I think it was maybe $130. I have had it a very long time and it's worked really well. I'm looking at getting a, a upgrading and going to one of a little bit higher. Now, couple of things about positioning your camera. So whether you're using your phone or your computer, you wanna have it up a little high. You don't wanna have a low angle looking up. It's not attractive, trust me. So it's always better to have it uh, even or a little bit higher. So I've got my computer on a little computer stand here and then on top of a shoe box. So it's a little fragile right now. For your phone, you can get a little tripod. Okay, so these little tripods work well. You still got to put these on something. And if you're using your phone, you probably won't use a USB mic. You can use the mic that's on your phone. Now, some of these mics, you know, they don't sound that great. I don't like the sound, so I always get a mic to go with my media source. This is a little Power DeWise. Um, lavalier mic, lapel mic. It has a clip that I don't have on there right now. And it goes into my phone. Now, when I got it, it didn't work in my phone because all it had was the auxiliary connection, okay? So then I had to get a little adapter for the iPhone. There's always something. <laughs> you're always solving problems when you're doing this. So when I got this, I couldn't use it right away. I then had to go back on and order yet another little adapter to make that work. So when I use my iPhone, which I do use if I'm filming in my kitchen, where I wanna change up the location if I'm doing something with food, um, 
and I'm using a tripod, then I use this. And what you do is you just hook it to the iPhone and then you, it's a very long cord on here and you want to put it up your dress or up your shirt because you don't want it dangling out. It doesn't look good. And then you hook it right here. You, if, if you look at some of the videos I've made, you'll notice this mic right here. I'll show you some of those. Um, now, the other thing I've got here, you might notice that I've got a light shining on me right here. Lighting is very tricky. It's good to have some light shining on you. It's If you've got a window, and I'm in my kitchen, I've got a window, and so the natural light is great, and that's really all I need. But I'm here in my living room right now, and it's a little dark in here. It's a dark day, and so what I'm going to show you, I'm going to have to get up here, sorry. Um, I'm going to show you this light ring that I have. This was very inexpensive. I'm going to we'll do this over here. Now I'm going to blind you here for a second. You can see it's a light, right? It's a light ring. And I'm going to turn this off because it's kind of blinding. So you can see how much darker it got in here, right? When I moved it. Uh, we'll have to see how that looks when I edit. I'll see what it looks like. But notice it's a light ring and it has all these different settings of different tones of light brightness of light and you can play around with that. I'm not good at lighting. You might have noticed in my video with Kevin Store that I did uh, on Zoom, I was using this and I looked really washed out. I think I had it up too high. And then your phone goes right in here, okay? So what you can do is you've got your phone and you got your light. You always want your light behind the camera, shining on you, behind the lens, and you just kind of snap this in like this. It's not snapping right now, but it will. Um, and so that's how you film. And this is what I use when I film in my, um, in my kitchen. You've got to have the camera flipped because you've got the monitor towards you. Um, so that's this. Now I'm going to turn. This was, not, this was not expensive. I think this was like $35. And I'm going to put this back again. You always want your light behind your camera and shining on you behind your, behind your lens there. Okay. Now that was a, if, I don't know if you noticed the legs on that. I had them squished up. That gets pretty tall. It's not a full-size tripod, but those legs that stand out, so I can adjust that based on my needs. It's on my dining room table right now. When I'm in my kitchen, I have to extend it a little bit, but not too much, and so you can really extend that nicely. So I don't really use this one very often at all. I tend to use that one because it's got the light and all that sort of thing. Now, the last thing I'm gonna talk about in this segment is that when you use your phone, to film. So let's say you've got you've got it in your tripod. We'll put it in this little tripod right here. And so you've got it in your tripod, all right? And then you're filming, okay? So you've got your camera flipped, okay? So now I'm filming myself, right? So I can see myself in the camera. Now, here's something that I really want you guys to practice and this is hard, okay? You're very tempted when you're filming on your camera to look at yourself in the monitor, but that's not where the camera is. And so you've probably seen people that they film themselves, but they always look like they're looking off to the side. That's because they're not looking in the camera. Camera's right here. So when you talk, train yourself to look in the camera. And it's a very hard thing to do. I've had to B-roll over stuff because I've, I've, I've filmed myself. And most of the time I'm looking in the right place and then all of a sudden I'll revert to looking in the monitor and it looks really weird. So then I'll have to put a, it's called B-roll, you just put a photo image, you know, you, you, you go to another image. Um, like what I did in this video where all of a sudden you're looking at the tripod, you're looking at the light, that's called B-roll. I'm still talking, but now you're seeing a different image. So anyway, that's a little trick and you have to practice it. I tell people sometimes it's a good idea to put a little like sticky note maybe somewhere here to kind of train your eye to look there. So that's just a little side note there on uh, when you use your, your phone to film, all right? Now, in the next segment, we'll talk a little bit about editing, and then I'm gonna show you a couple of videos um, of mine on my YouTube page. It's where a lot of stuff can live, and you can look at those and um, you know, see if any of those are like the kind of thing you wanna do, and then we can talk about it. All right, talk about editing next.